G'day guys, John here from FPV Australia. Um, you're probably wondering uh, what happened to my last video I put up just recently. I actually pulled it down because there was a fair bit in there I wanted to talk about and plainly forgot. Um, none of this is scripted, so all of these videos you see, it's, it's what's in my head at the time and I, I actually forgot. So this time I've actually, I've got some pointers so I don't forget anything. Um, so today, let's forget that video. Today is the 13th of uh, January, Friday the 13th. Oof, if you're superstitious, it's a scary one. Um, but what I'd like to do is just sort of tell you where we're at, what we're doing and uh, and what's coming and all that sort of stuff. And then what I'd like to do is touch on some, some misinformation that keeps popping up on these forums. Um, so this video might be a little longer than normal, but hopefully I'll get through it pretty quickly. Let's go from the start. What's happened? September, those rules came in, as you know, the, um, the sub two kilo rule, if you like, is what we'll call it. That came into play and um, you can now fly a sub two kilo machine after registering with CASA, wait your five days, you can go do it commercially. There's a whole bunch of rules and regulations around what you can and can't do. Um, and it's like standard operating conditions as they call it. And I'll, and I'll touch on them in a minute. Um, that came in, it's in place. Now the Senate put, a couple of senators put through a motion of disallowance, if you remember. That has since been withdrawn. Why? The result was, the desired result was achieved. There is now a Senate inquiry into drone rules in Australia. So uh, not just the rules, but the entire industry. Um, so not only is that happening, the CASA and the government have got their own review happening, but the Senate is completely independent. So they're gonna do their own thing and we'll get to the bottom of whether the current regulations are good, bad or indifferent or whatever else. I, I suggest there'll be some recommendations that'll come out of that Senate inquiry and we'll see what happens. That'll happen sometime this year. Probably mid-year, I think, if I was to be a gambling man. So right now, when nothing has changed since before Christmas, we're rolling. Some naming changes have happened. It's now called a remote pilot's license, which is great because now it's a license that is in the, what I like to call the pyramid of regulation. So we're all encompassing now. Um, the the OC has now just simply been relabeled remote operator certificate instead of unmanned operator certificate, but it's all the same thing. Uh, okay, so. Let's get that out of the way. Let's look at the sub two kilo class. Let's look at the rules because there's still people online, even certified operators who are somehow getting it wrong. So I'm not sure whether the, the quality of the training isn't good or they're just not absorbing the information or they simply forget, I don't know. So I'm gonna lay some, some, some untruths to, to bed right now. Here we go. Standard operating conditions for sub two kilo are 400 feet AGL is the first one. What does that mean AGL? Above ground level, meaning above the ground that is below the drone, not where you're standing. If you're you know, hypothetical standing on a mountain and you fly off the mountain, it's what's below the drone, not what's below your feet. Um, obviously, you know, if you're really, really close to the mountain, you, a little bit of common sense comes into here that you're not gonna get an aircraft go, but the way the regulations are written, it's above ground level. So if your drone is 600 feet above the ocean because you flew off a headland, you are breaking the law. 400 feet above the ground that the drone, it, the, below the drone, okay? So stand on a mountain, fly out. If you're now 600 feet up, you're 600 feet up. So let's get that. It's not above sea level and it's not above where you're standing. It's what the drone is above. Great. Um, 30 meters. Not allowed to fly closer than 30 meters, full stop. I keep reading, oh, I'm on private property and I got them to sign a waiver and it doesn't exist. 30 meters is 30 meters and it's 30 meters laterally, okay? Not 45 meters up because if the drone fails 45 meters up, it's probably gonna hurt more than if the drone failed 20 meters up. Get my drift? So it's 30 meters in any direction and a sub two kilo operator cannot have a waiver sign to allow you to get any closer. 30 meters. That's it. No flying at night. Now, the technical term for night in the aviation world is, is just that, it's technical. Civil twilight, yada, yada, yada. I won't go and bore you with the technicalities, but it's in English, it's like 20 minutes before sunrise and about 20 minutes before sunset, depending where you are on the earth and all that sort of stuff and conditions, whatever else. But when you talk to CASA, and I've done this numerous times to be sure, their recommendation is that we advise our students sunrise to sunset, then you can't get it wrong. So nighttime is out of the question. So let's, hypothetical, you're a sub two kilo operator and just recently you wanted to put a drone up from a distance to get some fireworks. If it's like 9.30 at night and the sun went to bed an hour ago, forget it. You cannot fly at night under sub two kilo and you can't get approvals to fly at night under sub two kilo, just not allowed. Populated areas, oh my goodness. This comes up so many times and uh, even the trained and certified get it wrong. 
The regulation actually states, and, I, and I'll, I'll, don't quote me on it verbatim, but it's something along the lines of if there is, a populous area is an area where there is significant density of population for the aircraft to pose a risk should it fail. Something along those lines. In other words, you're flying down the beach and you've got pockets of people scattered around everywhere and you're doing 60 k's an hour and your drone's hooting along and it fails and it throws a prop or whatever else happens and now it's you know, falling from 40 metres up in a big nice arc because of the speed it's travelling and donk someone on the head. Well, there you go, you're going to be done for that populist rule. So, further to the populist rule though, one thing I want to touch on is everybody keeps looking at these standard operating conditions, oh 400 feet, populated areas, 30 metres, yeah I'm good. There is one that sits above. If you want to look it up, it's really easy to remember. It's 101.055, so CASAR 101.055, hazardous operation. And it states, again, don't quote me verbatim, but it states, I'll not operate an aircraft that poses a risk to people, property, or another aircraft. Now that's the important one, because the other regulation for 30 meters just says people. It doesn't mention cars and buildings, so you can inspect your solar panels, no problem. But the hazardous operation does. If you're, for instance, let's just hypothetical, let's say you're, I don't know, you're at a, a drone racing is a great example, right? Drone races are flying around the circuit and adequate uh, safeguards haven't been put in place. And a drone coming up one of the one of the areas of the racetrack doing 90 k's an hour fails and it flies 45 meters and smacks someone in the scone who's standing in the in the sideline where the where the spectators sit. If you look at it, that aircraft was being flown in a in a way that poses a hazard to the spectators because at 80, 90 k's an hour, it's gonna travel that 30, 30, 40 meters that quick. So 30 meters might not be enough and then the hazardous operation comes into play. If you're at a football match and you put a phantom up and you're spinning it around the stands and you know, you're know you flying that in them as a hazardous. So that's an overarching thing and it doesn't just um, jump on the sub two kilo guys. Us OC guys, we're also under the hazardous operation and that includes people, property, or aircraft. So if you're flying beside a busy road and or you're flying towards a busy road and you turn at the last minute but the drone fails and it smashes into the highway and takes out a windscreen like we saw on the Harbour Bridge recently, that could be deemed posing a hazard to the road because at the speed the drone if it fails was always going to make the road. So again, I tell my students, whatever you do and however you fly, put yourself in a defendable position. If you are going to get asked questions, you don't want to answer with I don't know. That won't, that's not gonna look good for you. So, let's get rid of that. One at a time. This came up a couple of times just recently. What does one, I can only, you'll only fly one drone at a time. What does one at a time mean? Does that mean I can only operate, I can only own one drone and, and that's all I'm allowed to fly? No. It means that you can't put a Phantom 4 up, put it on waypoints, then pick up your Mavic, for instance, and do something else while that one's flying. One at a time. Um, so, you know, you can own, 10 drones for all for all they care, but you can only f have one in the air and you controlling one at a time. And you can't hand it off to a mate and go, well, hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. If, you, if he's gonna fly it, then land it. And if he's certified, if he's registered to fly under sub two kilo, then he starts the flight and it's him, right? All good. Let's get that out of the way. The whole sign a waiver thing, oh my goodness, I hear this a lot online. Even again, from guys who are up here to be certified. A sub two kilo operator can't get a waiver sign to be able to get closer than 30 meters. And the 30 meters is laterally, remember that, okay? It's not above, it's laterally. They can't sign a waiver and say, oh, I'm on private property, I can, you know, and they've, they've, they've signed a waiver, they're all good. There isn't anything that allows you to do that. So let's get that very clear. The only way you get a waiver to get closer than 30 meters is have a REOC, a UOC, as it used to be called, and, uh, and put in your procedures and steps that how you're gonna fly to 15 meters. And then CASA have to approve those or accept them and you put it, sorry, accept them and then you put them in your, um, in your library and away you go and you follow those steps every time you want to get within uh, 30 metres. But a m minimum distance of 15, you can't get any closer than that, no matter what waiver they sign. Uh, restricted airspace. Sub two kilo cannot fly in restricted airspace. Now let's look at Sydney Harbour. Sydney Harbour is restricted airspace both east and west of the bridge. There's two of them, they're both controlled by CASA, and one of them goes up to 500 feet, the other one goes up to 1,000 feet. 1,000 feet above the surface, that's the ground or the water, doesn't matter. Uh, why is it restricted? I won't go into, into the mini, mini, itty gritty details here uh, of Sydney Harbour, but it's a very busy airspace. There's care flight and air ambulance going scooting up the harbour. You've got seaplanes operating, you've got news choppers, you've got police choppers. It's, 
it's a busy airspace, so CASA like to know who is in there at any given point in time so they can try and keep a control on things. So if you think as a sub two key, you're gonna go down and film the next wedding on the steps of the Opera House, forget it. You'll need approval, and the only way to get approval at the moment is with a REOC. Let's get that out of the way, cool. So that's the standard basic operating system for sub two. Let's flip the coin now and go look at the OC and what's changed a little bit there. There's been some things added, so now night ops is really easy to get now, actually. You can add the night ops uh, section into your OC uh, library. You submit that off to CASA. CASA will uh, look at it, and if they accept it, they go into your library, and you can now fly at night. There's some things you need to do and processes you need to follow, but it's actually not that hard. Likewise, with the reduced distance to 15 meters, you can, uh, you can get reduced distance down to 15 um, with the right procedures and whatnot else, and CASA will be there to assist you. We can help you with that if you haven't got it already in your OC. Um, you will need that waiver sign uh, and, and follow those processes. It doesn't mean, once you get this 15 metre reduction, but that some people are thinking, that you can now just go down the beach and fly within 15 metres of everybody. It doesn't work that way. I saw a video recently with a flying over the beach. Oh no, we were more than 30 metres away. So well and good, but the populist rule comes into play and the hazardous rule comes into play. If, you know, like, it's, 30 metres might not be enough. If you're up 400 feet and I step out 30 metres, that drone is actually not that far. When you do the whole angles thing, it ain't that far away if it fails. So, you know, the 30 metres is not the be all and end all. There's a lot of people look at these main points of 30 metres and night time and 400 feet and go, I'm good. There's a few other things that need to be considered. So, and the stay away from uh, towered airfields, 3.3, uh, three nautical miles, 5.5 kilometers from a towered airfield. So if you look at Sydney, for instance, draw a three nautical mile boundary around Sydney from the airfield fence. Okay, that's what the movement area of the airfield means in the regulations, from the boundary line of the airport. Not the center of the runway, because the runways are bloody long enough as it is. You won't get that far away from the end of the runway at three nautical miles. It's from the boundary of the of the fence line. So, um, Kernel, for instance, if you look at Kernel, I think Kernel's inside the three noughts, and then you've got approach and departure path. Look, stay away from towered airfields, please. That's my best advice to you. Um, so, quickly, let's look at the OC. Um, uh, you can get approval to fly within three noughts for an OC. Although air services aren't uh, aren't really giving many, I heard some some uh, discussions recently that they um, they'll ask you to tether it. Um, so again, you know, within three nautical miles of an airfield, while possible, it's palaver. There's a lot of hoops to jump through, and if you have to have to do it, engage CASA and get the ball rolling, and hopefully you'll come out the other side. So look, if you've got any questions, I've rambled on enough. Hopefully, I've covered everything. Um, as I say, that the, the the myth behind signing a waiver, forget it. The myth behind allowing people to go within five meters of their head just because you signed a waiver, forget it. Especially if you're sub two kilo. Um, Populated areas, please look at where you're flying and think, wow, if this drone fails, is there a good chance it could hit someone? Because that's what they'll smack you with. Um, and, and, and nighttime and hazardous, you know, think about them, not at night for sub two. If you want to fly nighttime, you want to fly heavier than two kilo, come and get, a, an OC, come and get licensed. Um, I'd recommend, look, I'm biased, I guess. I run a, a flight school, but I've always been an advocate for safety. If you're going to operate as a professional in the drone industry, get certified. I hear this crap about red tape. There's no more red tape. It's about six weeks from start to finish. From nothing to fully certified and operational in six weeks. I don't know how that's red tape. But anyway, all good. If you've got questions, please, the dumbest question is the one you didn't ask me. Um, you're not gonna, get, in this organization especially, you're not gonna get looked down upon if you ask a question that maybe you know, is really easily found on Google. That doesn't matter. If you if you want to talk to someone in the game who and you want to have a chat about it and get the good oil, mate, give us a call. We are always happy to talk to you. You can call us if you like, 026-112-8551. Send us an email. Training at fpvaustralia.com.au will go straight to the training uh, to the training office. Chantel will, will answer that. Uh, you can get me directly if you like, john at fpvaustralia.com.au. Um, if Chantel can't help you, uh, she'll put you on to me and I certainly can. Um, you know, just because you don't know the answer to something doesn't doesn't mean anything. I didn't know the answer to something 11 years ago when I started in this industry. I've got 11 years experience under my belt, so chances are I'm going to know a bit. If you're new to the industry, chances are you're not going to know a bit, so that's fine. Ask the questions. If you need something clarified, you read something on the Facebook, because, you know, everything on the internet you read is true, uh, and you're not quite sure about it, 
contact us, happy to assist. Um, CASA's got some good information on their website as well, casa.gov.au, our website has it too, uh, fpvaustralia.com.au, um, where our courses are popping up all over the country now in 2017, we're in Perth and Canberra in the first month, uh, in February, they're our first courses we're running, we're off to Sydney and Melbourne, I've got to go up to the Kimberleys, I'm off with the United Nations this year, it's, look, lots happening, it's so exciting, I can't tell you. Um, Plenty of courses running all around the country. We're in every capital city, Adelaide, Darwin, Melbourne, Brisbane, you name it. We're looking to go to far north Queensland this year as well. I want to get up there um, so and back to Tasmania again too. So if you're looking for information, please feel free to contact us. Um, if you're not sure on stuff, contact us. Um, don't believe everything you read online. Get it from the horse's mouth. So always happy to, to help. Um, if you are wanting to get into the sub two kilo class, you can. You must register on the CASA website first. Go there, there's plenty of information there. If you are looking to get certified, contact us. We can get you on a course and get the ball rolling. If you want to add stuff to your UOC, night ops, um, you know, reduce distances to 15 meters, all that sort of stuff, contact us because we can help you with that as well. It's not that hard anymore. Um, CASA are bringing all these delegates online, one of which we will be hopefully some round time around the end of, the, end of this month, January, where we'll be able to process OCs for individuals. Obviously not the guys I train, that's a conflict of interest, but uh, if you're trained by someone else, you can come to us for your OC. Anyway, uh, until then, I'll, I'll, uh, until next time, I'll, uh, I'll put up another video in a little while if some things change. Um, unless something massively changes, I'll, uh, I'll sit back and relax for now. But like I say, you got any questions, just ask. If you are gonna fly your drone out there uh, and you're, you're going about, please, Think about restricted airspace. If you're not sure about restricted airspace, send me an email. I'll send you a screenshot of where you live and show you what airspace is around you so at least you can be safe. Um, in the meantime, please take care out there. Fly your drone safely and responsibly. Safe skies to all. Enjoy.